let's start probability by talking about the very basics. Most of what we're going to say for this video is going to feel somewhat natural. It should more or less accord with the way you use probabilities in your ordinary life. First off, we're going to call a probability a number between 0 and 1, and the interpretation of this has something to do with likelihood. If an event has probability 1, that means it's definitely going to happen. If an event has probability 0, it's definitely not going to happen. And if event has probability 1 half, if I were to run this event a lot of times, I would expect roughly half the time it happened and half the time it didn't. If an event occurs with probability 1 third, similarly, if I run this event a whole bunch of times, I expect out of the total number of times, roughly one third of them, it occurred. So for example, so for example, let's say I flip an unfair coin and the probability of turning up tails is one third. Well, it's not the case that I'm going to go, you know, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, heads. But if I do it enough times, I count up all of the trials. I think there's 21. And then of those trials, I figure out how many tails I got. This number for a large number of trials should be close to or equal to one third. We're going to use some very specific notation. Events are things that result in values. An event is something that happens that gives you your random value. So for example, rolling a dice is an event. Three is a value arising from that event. Flipping a coin is an event. Heads is a value arising from that event. Just to keep things straight, usually not always, we like to use capital letters for events and lowercase letters for values. We're going to use a particular shorthand because writing these things out in sentences takes too long. So if I want to write the probability of a dice roll being 5 is 1 sixth, I would use PR for probability. My event is a dice roll. So I'm going to give that a variable, and it's nice if it's a capital letter. The value that I'm concerned with is 5. So this is the probability that my event of rolling a dice gives me the value 5. A probability is a number between 0 and 1, and in this case, that number is 1 sixth. Now it's your turn. Take a second, figure out how to express this in a full English sentence, and then think about what number it's equal to. PR means probability. Capital X is our dice roll and the values we're concerned with are 1 or 2. So this expression means the probability that a dice roll is 1 or 2. Probabilities are numbers between 0 and 1. So let's think about what number that is. Well, all six dice rolls are equally likely. And I'm concerned with two out of those six possibilities. So I, it's reasonable to assume roughly 2 sixths of the time, which is the same as 1 third. When I roll a dice, it's going to come up with a 1 or a 2. Now, sometimes we want to bring even more variables into it, and I want to do a really easy example just to get everything straight in our heads. So let's say X is flipping a fair coin. The probability that that event ends up as heads is a half, and the probability that X ends up as tails is a half. So if X is a value that is equal to heads, or tails, I can write the probability that big X, that's my event, is equal to little x, that's my value, is 1 half. This looks a little weird at first glance, this x equals x. So it says the probability that I flip a fair coin and it ends up as x, where x is either heads or tails, that probability is 1 half. Not all probabilities are equally weighted in the way that in the ways that we're used to with coin flipping and dice rolling. Let's say we have a bunch of people come into a room and each one of them gets to choose one of three boxes. It's not necessarily the case that a third choose A and a third choose B and a third choose C. We don't know what percentage of them want to choose A. Maybe A is really great, maybe A is not so great, but we can still describe the events that are happening. Take a second and think about in this scenario, how can you describe the event and what are the possible values? The event is the process that's happening, which is someone chooses a box, however you want to describe that. The 
possible values are, they could choose A, they could choose B, and they could choose C. Now using our notation, I want you to write the probability that the tester chooses product A is one-fifth. Probability is PR. We have some event. We like to give them uppercase names. Let's call this X. The probability this event results in the value A. A probability is a number between one and zero. And in this case, we're saying it's one-fifth. So maybe we had 100 people choose a product and 20 of them choose A. We can have more than one event going on. Let's say after everybody chooses their box, they're led into a second room and they get to choose a puppy. Now I have two events, so I'm going to need two different variables for them. What I want you to do first is translate this expression into just an English sentence and then evaluate these. So you should have a number for these second and third expressions. The first expression, PR means probability. X is choosing a product. We want the probability that the tester chooses product A. Y is the puppy. We also want the, we want the probability that both of these things happen, that someone chooses both box A and puppy two. Now this isn't a number I can tell you. We would need to actually do this trial or have more information, but at least I can express it. The second and third expressions, we actually can come up with values for. This says, what is the probability that the tester chooses puppy one or they don't choose puppy one. The way our system is set up, they definitely have to choose a puppy. So some of them choose puppy one, and the rest of them don't choose puppy one. So certainly one of these two things happens. So this probability is one. With 100% certainty, they choose one or not one. For the second example, what are the probabilities that they choose both puppy one and puppy two? Well, by the design, they only get one puppy, so nobody gets to choose two. So this probability is zero. We can generalize this. The, why don't you think about these two numbers? You should be able to tell me an actual number, regardless of the event that's going on, if it's coin flipping or dice rolling or puppy choosing. If I wanna know the probability that something happens or doesn't happen, well, that's one. 100% of the time, it happens or it doesn't. This second line is very similar to the first. The probability that X happens plus the probability it doesn't happen. Well, if X happens half the time, that means it doesn't happen the other half. If X happens a third of the time, that means the remainder of the time, two thirds, it doesn't happen. In general, because exactly one of these happens, when I add these probabilities together, this is just describing all possibilities. So again, this is one. This second line is really useful for calculating certain probabilities. We're gonna later on talk about an example uh, of the windfall lottery. For now, we're just going to give a few probabilities from one particular lottery that happened in 2010. So you buy a ticket and odds are one in 50 that you win $27 with that ticket. Odds are 1 in 800 that you win $800 with that ticket, and odds are 1 in 40,000 that you win $22,000 with that ticket. So in the pie chart, we've represented these colored wedges, but of course the gray is the odds that you don't make any money. So we should be able to calculate this probability, given these other probabilities, using this principle that I can just add them together. I know what percentage of the pie is here, here and here, and so the gray is just the rest of it. So why don't you take a second, write down the probability of not winning anything with this lottery ticket. So 100% of the time, I either get $27, or $800, or $22,000, or 
the probability that I'm interested in, call it P, the odds that I don't get anything. If I add these four numbers together, that's everything. So it needs to add up to one. So P is one minus one fiftieth, which happens to be 800 over 40,000, minus one eightieth, which happens to be 50 over 40,000, minus one over 40,000. So that's 40,000 minus 851 over 40,000, which is 39,149 over 40,000. So just about 39 times out of 40, you actually don't win any money.